Yes? Our man in Madras, Mr. Sieg. Thanks, Shane. Hello, Bob. How's it going? This is Jim speaking. You bet from the main office where we, that is HB, the overseas manager, the sales manager, and yours truly, have been discussing you in some detail. If I may be frank, Bob, HB was not very impressed with your last sales report here. Well, I'm sure, of course, you picked up a bit from the last quarter, Bob. Seven twelfths of one percent, as I pointed out to HB, Bob. But compared with what I'm in an Australia and Europe are accomplishing, your figures still fall pretty short. Now, of course, we know, Bob, that you're working under very special conditions down there, which you always write up in your reports in great detail. But, Bob, let's be honest. And since your contract with well, us expires at the end of the month anyway, just happened to have it here in front of me, we now come to the question of whether we should extend it. HB, he's, he's in a conference now. I think we ought to hash out this little problem that we have with your attitude, and that's why I'm calling you. Before we come to any final decision about the extension of your contract, I would like to give you the opportunity to explain to me your attitude towards HB. Can you hear me, Bob? Hello, Bob. What are you doing? What? Sometimes you're loud, sometimes you're not. You, you've what? Burned your hands. Your skin is peeling? How's that? Not only your hands. What, what kind of rays, Bob? Can't you speak a little louder? If I've understood you correctly, you just said Madras has had it. Not only Madras. The whole of southern India. Okay, now, now you're putting me on. You're serious. Did I know? Of course not. I had no idea. Just a minute, Bob. Jane! Mr. Sieg? Is HB in his office yet? No, Mr. Sieg. Would you just try to find out if he's awake yet? I have something here which might interest him. Yes, Mr. Sieg. Barbara, are you speaking from our office? Our office has had it. You're speaking from a cellar. That's why your voice sounds so hollow. Your voice sounds... Mr. Sieg? W one moment, Bob. Yes? Well, I only wanted to tell you that HB is already awake. And what's he doing? Oh, they're just putting him in the tub. Uh, uh, is Fred around? Yes, Mr. C. Would you please tell him that I have something here which might interest HB, and I'd be grateful if he'd keep in touch with me during the next hour. Gladly, Mr. C. Let me know when HB leaves his bath. Sorry, Bob, we were interrupted. What's that? Your hair is falling out. Sorry to hear that, Bob. Jay! Uh, Mr. C? Can you please tell Fred that I've been calling to ask him to very cautiously broach the subject to HB? As to whether he shouldn't maybe revise his Asian policy in light of the newest development there. He's certainly heard about it by now. I see great possibilities in it. You bet I do. And would you ask Fred not to mention that the proposal comes from me until HB makes a positive decision? Yes, Mr. Sieg. You know, you're a lucky dog, Bob. I said you're a lucky dog. A lucky dog! I was just sitting here with your personnel file in my hand about to send off one of my famous farewell letters. I know people would gladly have a hand chopped off for a chance like this. What kind of a chance? Christ's sakes, man, you tell me that all of Southern India is gone and you ask me what kind of a chance? If what you're telling me is true, and I hope for your sake that it is, then HB has got to update his Asian policy. If he does that, you've got it made. You know the people, you know the country, you're used to the climate there. Now you can show HB what you're made of. Your left ear is wiggling. Don't touch it, Bob. Leave it alone. You know how much he enjoys starting something from scratch. I can't tell you how many times he's looked at me with those big, sad eyes and said, what's with these trifles, Jim? Give me a continent to conquer. Well, that's just what we've got now, Bob. A continent. I understood you correctly. You just said there's not much left over there. Just a minute, Bob. Jane! Mr. Sieg? Have you oriented Fred? Yes, Mr. Sieg. Does he want to broach the subject with HB? Yes, Mr. Sieg, just as soon as the masseur is finished. Thanks, Jane. Bob, if I see the situation correctly, which is not easy, because you don't say much, do you? Your left ear has come off now. And it seems to me that you're proposing that since the whole place there is gone, nature and building-wise, HB should... Shoot and everything he's got, put the country back on his feet, let's say two or three years, depending on the contract. Fine, Bob, I'll submit your proposal to HB. You're speaking from Madras, India, 
Population? 4,300,000. Jane! Mr. C? Go look up Madras. Yes, Mr. C. Okay, now the extent of the catastrophe, Bob, tell me. Fire, Jane. Madras, the capital and chief port of Madras State, India, is situated on the eastern coast of India. The population in 2012 was 4,416,056. I'll admit, Bob, it's not easy to have a survey of the damage from a cellar hole, but the cellar's got to have a window. Well, good, then go to the window. You're at the window, Bob. But there's a box in front of it. Of course, I'll wait. Jane. Mr. C? Exports, please. The chief exports are seeds, nuts, skins, and hides. Are you up, Bob? Very good. Now, tell me what you see. Nothing. Because what is lying in front of the window? A dead woman? Sorry, Bob. Can't she be pushed aside, Bob? How do I know with what? A board? OK. Now just take it and push her aside. And don't whine like that. And why not? You don't have the strength. I'll tell you what you don't have, Bob. You don't have the... You knew the woman. Just the same, Bob. Spit in your hands and push. Push! She's your wife. Oh, Bob. Do you know what I would like to be able to do right now? I would like to be able to hold your hand. Even if I hardly knew... Uh, Martha, I, that was her name, it wasn't, she was called Elizabeth, Martha was her middle name, so she filled out this form here incorrectly, that's not meant to be a reproach. Even if I hardly knew Elizabeth, Bob, I still remember her clearly. What do you want? How you met Elizabeth? Sure, you can tell me how you met Elizabeth, Bob, I'm listening, Bob. Jane! Mr. C. What is HB doing? Oh, they're just putting him on the table. Thank you, Jane. You're welcome, Mr. C. Bob? Bob? Pardon me if I'm interrupting you, Bob. You're real spellbinder. I could listen to you for hours, but should we be... Sure thing, Bob. You just take your time. Take all the time you need. Jane! Mr. C? The imports, please. <laughs> the chief imports are coal, timber, textiles, building... She's out of the way! Good show! Do you want me to print the article? No. What do you see? Oh, that's very good. I'll write that down. Okay, wiped out, pulverized, melted, charred, suffocated... Buried. Are you sure you aren't exaggerating things Just a little bit? But no, no, good. Okay, I believe you. Okay, now let's take a look in the other direction, Bob. What do you see there? It's getting dark. What time do you have? Let's just do the following, Bob. Let's stick out our arms straight ahead. Can you see your hands, Bob? You can't. Well, then let's just move them closer. Can you see them now? I have to be 100% convinced that things are completely in the red, and, and frankly, I'm not convinced today. No, no, Bob, I'm sorry. It's impossible for me to rely on the report of an eyewitness who admits to me he can't even see his own hands in front of his face. And you're idyllic world you have no idea how it is here with us we don't play golf in the afternoon we live in a jungle in my position i sit with my back to the wall and even i'm not safe from the daggers of the junior execs fortunately that's the truth bob we don't want to give them this little opening with our plan do we bob you've lost your wife you're worried about your job Maybe your health isn't exactly where it should be. Of course, all this doesn't necessarily speak against you, but in any case, it just might impair your judgment, mightn't it? And HB can't reverse his Asian policy on the basis of a judgment call colored by personal experience, can he? So if you want to push this project through with HB, you're going to need to see to it that somebody confirms your report. There's nobody left. <laughs> You just said to me yourself, the Madras has a population of 4,300,000. Actually, it's 4,416,056. And now you want to tell me that not one of those people can come to the phone! Your voice sounds terrible, Bob, like you have something in your mouth. You do have something in your mouth. What do you have in your mouth? You have blood in your mouth. Sorry to hear that, Bob. I, I, I thought you had a hard time talking. Nevertheless, Bob, just, just yell once more for my sake, Bob. Nobody? We could really use another eyewitness now, Bob. You wouldn't want to go out on the street and ran up someone yourself. Ooh, the radiation, I understand. I bet the rays you're so afraid of have already been absorbed by dear old Mother Earth and made harmless. How long do they last? 99 years. But suit yourself. You must know what your job is worth to you. Mr. C. One moment, Bob. Yes? Fred has just broached the subject to HB. Yes, and, and, and how did HB take it? He smiled, Mr. Sieg. Really, Jane? 
Yes, yes, Mr. C. I hope Fred won't forget to tell HB whose proposal this was. I'm sure he won't, Mr. Sieg, but for the moment, uh, HB is still being shaved, and... You keep me tuned in, Jane. Absolutely, Mr. Sieg. The news is just getting better and better, Bob. Unofficially, I'm just now getting the cue that HB has already accepted our project. Hello, Bob, are, are you still with me? Of course you're getting air, Bob. You're getting air terrifically. Just, just, just do what I say, Bob. Lie down on the rats. Relax, Bob. You're still too cramped. Just relax, relax, and now breathe smoothly and regularly. One, two, one. Just, just count along with me, Bob. Yes, Bob, it's a great moment for both of us. Anybody HB is pulling for has got it made. And that seems to be the case with you, you lucky guy. Are you gargling, Bob? Now, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if HB should dispatch one of his planes to you today and fly you in tonight for a personal discussion. Mr. Sieg. One moment, Bob. HP has come to a decision. Yes, and? He's against it, Mr. Sieg. He's against it? Yes, Mr. Sieg. Why is he against it? He didn't give a reason. He's against it? Yes, Mr. Sieg. Did Fred tell H.P. whose proposal this was? No, Mr. C. Would you remind Fred then not to mention that it came from me? Of course, Mr. Sieg. Thank you, Jane. You're welcome, Mr. Sieg. This is Jimmy again. I want to go back to the beginning of our conversation. Yes, Bob, to your basic attitude towards HB and the firm, which is still not quite clear to me. I'm afraid that our little talk couldn't entirely eliminate the unfavorable impression of your last sales figures as well as of your aptitude test, which are, which are here in front of me. The right one came off, too, now. Uh-huh. Now, H.P. admits that you have a mind that thinks outside of the box. And sometimes a person can go too far with that kind of thinking as, as you've been doing, Bob. You want H.P. to okay a project which boils down to investing billions of dollars in the desert, which will be contaminated for more than 99 years. You want to dump our high-quality products on a market which consists of 4,416,056 corpses. Yes, Bob, that's what you want. This proposal of yours, which, by the way, HB has just turned down, isn't too realistic. For example, considering the growing squeamishness of people nowadays, where is HB supposed to get the labor to work in the area? No, Bob, there's no use getting emotional. You were calling for water. <laughs> now, I'm of the opinion, Bob, that you have a very, very useful skill set that could be utilized by any number of employers. So, look, Bob, it's not going to be too difficult for you to... Bob. Bob, I know you don't have ears anymore. Would you nevertheless please try to listen to me one more second? I don't want you coming to me one day and saying that you... Hello, Bob, I don't hear your throat rattling anymore. Hello, Bob, are you still there? HB admits, Bob, that you do your very best, but sometimes, Bob, you have to do more than your best if you want to keep your job. I'm sorry, Bob, but we'll just have to let you go. <laughs> Jane. Mr. C? 
you have our holiday card list handy? Yes, Mr. C. Cross off our men in Madras. Life on a Sunday morning, quiet.